We're going to look at how to use trigonometry to find the size of angles in right angle triangles. So here we've got our reminder of the formulae, SOHCAHTOA, written out in formula triangles to help us to find the formulae more easily. So remember, this means sine of the angle, whatever angle we're interested in, equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent of the angle equals the opposite over the adjacent. Now this symbol here that I've used for the angle is called theta. It's a Greek letter and it's often used to represent angles. So you might well see that in different questions. Now we're looking at how to find the angle in a triangle. But this formula tells us not how to find the angle itself, but how to find the sine of the angle, or the cosine of the angle, or the tangent of the angle. So there's one extra step we need to do when we found the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of the angle to find the angle itself. So let's look at an example. Say we had that the sine of the angle was equal to 0 0.5. Now, sine and cosine of angles are always going to be decimals less than 1. The tangent of the angle could be more than 1, but it's still going to be a small number. So this is fairly typical. Sine of an angle is 0 0.5. Now if we want to find the angle itself in degrees, we have to do something called the inverse sine, which we write like this, sine to the minus 1. The inverse sine just means the opposite of the sine of the angle. Inverse is opposite or, or undoing. So we're finding the inverse sine of 0 0.5. Because the sine of the angle is 0 0.5, we're trying to do the opposite to find the angle itself. Now we need to use a calculator to do this. So if we look at our calculator, in order to do the inverse of the sine, the cosine, or the tangent, we use the shift or second function key. So here I'm going to press shift, sine, which gives me sine to the minus 1, or the inverse sine, of 0 0.5 and that equals 30 degrees. So an angle that has a sine of 0 0.5 could be 30 degrees. Let's have a look at a straightforward question. Here we've got a right angle triangle with two side lengths given, 8 and 7, and we're given an angle here marked x and very simply we're asked to find angle x. So the first thing we want to do here is to write down Sokotoa. So I'm going to do that quickly. Always do that at the top of every question or every page. And now we need to label our side lengths. So this side here is opposite the right angle. So this one will be the hypotenuse. This one here is opposite the angle we're interested in. So this will be the opposite. And so this one, being next to the angle, will be the adjacent. Now, when we're finding the angle in a triangle, we need to look at the two side lengths that we know. In this case, we know the opposite and we know the hypotenuse. And it's the sine that connects those two. So we're going to use the formula for the sine of the angle. So if we write it out, we can say the sine of x, which is the angle we're trying to find, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And if you put the numbers into that, the sine of x will be 7 divided by 8. We can work out 7 divided by 8. So we use the calculator to do that. 7 divided by 8 gives you 0 0.875. So the sine of x is 0 0.875. So we found the sine of our angle. We now need to find the angle itself. So x will be the inverse sine of 0 0.875. And we can use our calculator to work that out. So we use the shift button, shift, sine, inverse sine. And then we can use the answer we've got on here. Most calculators will have an answer button. In this case, it's shift 
and then down here you see answer is the second function on this button and that will use the previous answer in the calculation so sine to the minus one of 0 0.875 gives me 61.044975.63 degrees and I'm going to round that to one decimal place that's going to be 61.0 degrees to 1 dp don't forget your degree sign, don't forget to state what the accuracy is that you've used. Here's another question. This time we've got a point T here, which is 80 metres away from a flagpole, and the flagpole is 27 metres high. And we're asked to find the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole from the point T. Now the angle of elevation is the angle between the horizontal and this line that goes from T to the top of the flagpole. So it's that angle there that we're interested in. And we'll label that angle x. So we're trying to find this angle here. We've got Sokotoa written down already. We need to label our side lengths next. Now the flagpole and the ground form a right angle. So this side here will be the hypotenuse because it's the longest side opposite the right angle. This is the angle we're interested in. So opposite that is the height of the flagpole. So that's the opposite. And adjacent to that is the ground, that's the adjacent. So if we look at the information we've got, we know the opposite and we know the adjacent. So the opposite and the adjacent are connected by the tan ratio, so we're going to use the tan ratio to work out our angle. So we can say that tan of x equals the opposite over the adjacent. Put the numbers in, tan of x is 27 over 80. And if we use our calculator to work out tan 27 over 80, so 27 divided by 80 is 0 0.3375. So the tangent of our angle is 0 0.3375. We want to find the angle itself, x, so we're going to do the inverse tan in exactly the same way we did the inverse sine, inverse tan of 0 0.3375. And if we use our calculator to do that, shift tan of the answer 0 0.3375 gives us 18.64953875 degrees. And rounding to one decimal place, that's going to be 18 point six degrees to one dp. Here's a third question. A cord of AB of length ten centimeters is drawn in a circle of radius six centimeters with a center labeled O. Calculate the angle AOB. So a cord is the line between two sides of a circle that doesn't go through the centre, so that's this line here, AB. And we're told that that length is 10 centimetres. We're told the radius from the centre to the edge of the circle is 6 centimetres. Now because both these lines, AO and OB, are both from the centre to the edge, they are both a radius, and they are both 6 centimetres. So that makes this red triangle here an isosceles triangle, because it has two sides the same length. Now the angle we're trying to find is this one, the angle AOB. That's the angle between the line AO and the line OB. Now at the moment we don't have a right angle that we can use to use trigonometry to find this angle. So what we need to do is create one. So if we take an isosceles triangle and we split it exactly in half down the centre, that will create two identical right angled triangles. So there's a right angle there and there's a right angle there. We only need to use one of these to find the angle. So if we use this right-hand triangle, we know this side length is 6 centimetres. This length here will be half of the original 10 centimetres, so this length here will be 5 centimetres. And if we label our sides, the 6 centimetres will be the hypotenuse. This is the angle we're interested in, let's call it theta. So our 5 centimetres is the opposite side length. And this one here is the adjacent. 
So we've got the hypotenuse and we've got the opposite. So we need to use the sine to find our angle. So sine theta, remember theta is just another way of writing the angle like a letter, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine theta is 5 over 6. And if we put that into our calculator, 5 over 6, I hope you know 0 0.83 recurring. So 0 0.83 recurring. And if we want to find our angle theta, then we need to find the inverse sine of 0 0.83 recurring. So shift sign of the answer gives us 56.4426924. Now at this stage, we're not finished with our question. So instead of rounding it, I'm going to write down the whole number as part of my working. And we're not yet finished because we were asked to find the angle AOB, which is this whole angle here. So far, we've only found half of this angle, so to complete our question, we need to double our answer so we've got the whole angle here. So angle AOB, you can sometimes write an angle with this symbol here. So angle AOB is going to be two lots of theta. So angle AOB will be two multiplied by 56.44, etc. And if we work that out on our calculator, we're going to multiply our answer here by 2. So multiply by 2 gives us an answer of 112.8853805 degrees. And rounding to one decimal place, that's 112.9 degrees, which is the angle AOB at the centre of the circle.